headed. Thanks, Steve. Uh, let me add my welcome to all of you today. Uh, we have record attendance uh, for, for the CIA annual conference and uh, really appreciate everybody making time to be here. Uh, I'm going to take a few moments to talk about um, the theme and, and what we're doing at CII. Uh, some, some people only see or interface with us uh, a few times a year, particularly at the annual conference, so it's important for us just to update everybody on what we're doing at CII. So our strategic planning committee came up with the theme for this year of the future is here, are you ready? Um, it was reflective of CI's four strategic themes being people, process, technology, and business model. But the theme intentionally has multiple meanings. So the future of technology that was seemingly such a long way off is here today. Uh, the recipe for success in our industry through research is here at CII. And the future is on display here in San Diego. So the Strategic Planning Committee, I think, did a good job with the theme. You are definitely in the right place uh, to embrace the future. Now, you may recall that in uh, 2016, CI created a, a task force to reconceive how the Institute operates and how it could better achieve its mission. Uh, this work group created these five industry sectors. Many of you are part of those. Um, the outputs and findings from these sectors, the first research efforts are on display this week. So this is the first time you will see the research effort of our five industry groups. But even if you're not in one of these industry groups, you can still really benefit. Uh, we call that interdisciplinary learning or inter interdisciplinary research. So if you're in oil and gas, you can learn what's happening in facilities and healthcare and really benefit. Also, our sectors are meeting on Thursday. Each of them are looking at their business imperatives and refining that into one or two key uh, objectives moving forward. So they have basically finished this first phase of their work with the research and they're looking at what's next and visitors are welcome. So let me uh, turn it back over to Steve to talk a little bit about uh, the annual conference and sponsorships. Yeah, so you, you might wonder, um, you know, why we have the uh, the showcase next door. If you haven't already uh, seen that, uh, that's where the, the breakfast was, where the breaks will be, so on and so forth. Um, over the years, uh, you know, to, to kind of support this conference, um, a lot of the, the funding for it came from dues, from, from your all contribution to, to the organization. And um, the Strategic Planning Committee, as well as the Executive Committee, you know, kind of thought, well, maybe it might be better to, to provide sponsorships so that more of your money goes towards research. Um, and Stephen's going to give you kind of an overview of that a little bit later on um, as far as how much more research we're being able to do now versus where we were in the past. So to, to kind of subsidize the conference here, we said, well, maybe we, we kind of offer some sponsorships um, similar to other organizations, other society meetings, um, similar to what we're doing here. Um, so that's the, the path we went. Um, so we have some title sponsors of Innate, Victolic, and uh, Aviva. And we've got other con conference sponsors for uh, supporting the, um, the overall session here. And again, providing more of your funding over to, to research. So I'd like to thank the, the sponsors for, for helping fund this, the event last night, and some of the things coming up for the next couple of days and in the evenings. Um, so if we can give them a round of applause, uh, I think it'd be great. <laughs> One thing I, I forgot to mention earlier is, uh, and I think we, we found out this morning, that this is the, the, the largest attended conference that CII's ever put on. Um, the attendance numbers are somewhere around 730. Um, we've got roughly 200, 210 different companies represented, roughly 25-ish um, universities represented. Uh, I think that's a fantastic kind of testament of the industry, where we're going, the interest in technology and how we're moving, moving things forward. How do we get more productive? Uh, these are all things that CII is you know, researching and, and demonstrating next door. What you'll find um, next door is in the, in the showcase itself is um, examples of technology. Um, it should not be a, a sales pitch or anything like that, although obviously their, their uh, products are, are for sale. But we tried to kind of keep it to, you know, what is 
um, what's happening from a technology standpoint, what's happening with how people are implementing the technology, uh, and giving you a chance to experience that uh, next door. You'll also find that the, um, there's a, the location for the academia or academics and uh, you know, their, their uh, uh, research and, and efforts. You'll find that there is um, some of the research topics that you'll hear presentations from uh, on this stage in the next couple of days. If they have a product, you can actually go and kind of use the product next door as well. And then also CII's got its, its location. So if you take a look at the, the chart up on the screen here, um, the green areas are the areas of exhibitors, right? So this is where you can actually you know, practice some of the we talk virtual reality, the, the goggles will be there, and you can actually experience some of that as well as some of the other um, uh, technologies. In the blue area, that's CII, right? So if you go in the room uh, from the doors out here, go to the right, CII and the different uh, industry sector uh, uh, information uh, for those of you who are either not in a sector or a prospective member, you know, how those sectors are organized and, and set up. Uh, in the red area, uh, go in the room right to the, the left, that's the academic area. Behind that on the left-hand side in the, uh, up here on the screen, in the yellow, those are the research teams. So some of the research that's presented here, you'll get a chance to go to those two booths and uh, uh, experience some of that. The light blue box in the top right, uh, that's a VIP session, so in any of the keynote speakers and so on, they'd be available there to, to, to chat with a little bit further if, uh, if interested from you all. All right, so I'd like to hand it back to Stephen, and he's going to give you some of the, our safety records and other metrics. Thanks, Steve. So I'm going to talk about the state of CII, where we're at. We've made, obviously, a lot of change and progress in the organization since I became the director at the end of 2015. And I'd like to highlight some of the progress. Uh, we, we'll start with safety. This is uh, the cohort of CI companies. And uh, it's probably the area where CI has made the greatest impact is in, is in the area of safety. And we've traditionally always opened the annual conference with our annual safety survey. Uh, this is surveying calendar year 2018. Uh, during calendar year 2018, we had 2.6 billion work hours reported by 55 companies. It's a little bit lower than the report for calendar year 2017 when we had 3 billion work hours and 66 companies. Um, you'll still see the majority of the spend uh, by our members on construction projects is actually outside the U.S. That's the yellow box at the bottom, so it's showing 57% is international. The green says global because we can't actually determine if that's domestic or international. Uh, the total recordable incident rate for calendar year 2018 was 9% higher than it was in 2017. Let me just point out that the thing that looks like a lollipop with the, the dotted green line, uh, the dotted green line was a change in the OSHA reporting. So uh, we're really reflecting the red number at the far lower right of the screen. Uh, 0.24 would be the composite CII uh, total recordable incident rate. It's still roughly an order of magnitude better than the rest of the heavy industrial and non-residential construction sectors. So that's good, but it's obviously not trending in the right direction. We want to get closer to zero. The fatality rate, however, is really the big story this year, and it's not a good story. It's 47% higher than it was in calendar year 2017, and of course, anything above zero is totally unacceptable. Uh, when we break this down a little further, we find out that calendar year 2018, the CII cohort of companies that reported uh, showed 24 fatalities. Uh, the, the bulk of these were contact with objects and equipment, that's blue, and, um, and falls in orange. We should be able to do a whole lot better. Um, the trends in the safety performance uh, in fatalities is just not acceptable. And if you think that, well, it's 55 companies out of the 145 or so that we have in CII, obviously we need more, more companies submitting data, but 93% uh, of these companies this year were the same companies submitting in 2017. So it's not just a different blend of companies, it's literally that the fatality and the safety performance did decline. Uh, so we have to do something to solve that. Uh, we've got some research programs, but I think we're going to have to uh, recommit to pay probably some more, some more research. Uh, the other thing is, as we double down on our research, uh, we also have to double down on the data, and that would include safety. Um, we continue to support benchmarking as we have since 1995. 
Uh, I think there's maybe some rumors that we've gotten away from that, and I used to run the benchmarking program when I was an associate director here. Uh, but we have really added uh, a lot of capability, and uh, we have a strategic initiative uh, to modernize our data analytics, uh, take advantage of technology. So we formed a benchmarking advisory group, a technical advisory group, to advise and relaunch how we do data collection and, and analysis and analytics. And uh, we're, we're doing everything we can to think about the future and, and use these big data techniques. Now, the University of Texas, where CI is located, is absolutely the best place to uh, input, uh, store, and retrieve your data because we are a completely neutral, impartial third party. Uh, it's been around for more than 100 years, and it will continue to be around for a good time to come. Uh, so. Uh, we'd like you to uh, possibly attend an information session about this if you're going to be here on, on Thursday. There's more information at the CII booth uh, that Steve pointed out just a second ago. And if you happen to be interested in data and analytics, I would encourage you to go there. The other thing that we've done is uh, really after four decades, uh, we are streamlining what we're doing. And we have 10 strategic initiatives. Uh, you see them on the screen. We have three research programs. Those are shown in pink uh, with our funded studies group. Uh, in blue, we have two strategic initiatives in technology, uh, two in deployment. Uh, the sectors continue to have their key business objectives. And then in, in purple or, or light blue, uh, membership and communications. We're trying to engage with our executives at our firms. Uh, and so we have top to bottom engagement across all the member companies. Steve mentioned we're doing more research than ever before. Um, the teams presenting here in 2019, there are nine of them. Uh, we spent collectively uh, close to a million and a half dollars on these. This is very comparable to what we did four, five, six years ago. In 2015, for example, we also had nine teams. We spent about $1.7 million on that. But I think the big news is going forward. Uh, we're kicking off this year nine new research teams spending $2 million uh, of, of the money that, that Steve's talking about. Um, going into this, uh, we had six teams that would have launched in 2015. So again, we're doing a little bit more. But in addition to this, we have a large amount of external research funding. Uh, that totals $9 million over the next three years. That's not <coughs> packing member dues at all, because an objective is to keep the dues where they're at. Uh, we're going to average about $2.5 million um, each year for the next three years through our uh, MCPI, and I'll talk about that later, and our OS2 um, research initiatives. So we are more than doubling our spend directly on research uh, over the next three years. Um, part of the other way that we've done this is we've taken steps in the last three years to significantly strengthen CII's financial position. That was mostly accomplished by renegotiating our fee structure with the university. Um, and that actually incentivizes us to do more external research. And so that's exactly what's happening. All of this directly benefits you and the projects that you're working on. Steve, Steve maybe one thing. Um, you know, if you, if you go back on those numbers, sure. um, if you look at the amount of participation that you all uh, in the research, uh, if you go back a number of years, it was roughly, I don't know, maybe uh, 20 people per research team uh, was what it was averaging. If you look at the numbers now, even though we're doing more research, there's, there's less participation per, per team. So this is, you know, the, the, the call to action uh, side of it is get engaged, right? We are doing more research. The research is, is targeted either on an overall um, overarching uh, benefit to, to the industry as a whole or the research that's associated with your industry sector. But each one of these teams needs your support, right? They need the input from owners, contractors, suppliers, and the numbers aren't supporting that, right? So. My pitch is to, to get engaged, you know, uh, assign some folks from your, uh, your organizations on these teams. We talked to the next gen people yesterday. Um, they're, they're eagerly wanting to get involved. So maybe a next gen person from your organization on, on each of the teams or so on, but something to get more participation in these, these research efforts. Sorry. No, you're, you're fine. That's exactly right. Um, so the other big change is instead of having individual research topics, we have research programs. And this, what this does is we have 10 research teams in three research programs. They're named Workforce 2030, sort of envisioning the future of what our workforce will look like in the next decade. Uh, Artificial Intelligence Engine for Advanced Work Packaging 
and integrated and collaborative del delivery. So these programs deliver long-term benefits to your organization because we have a number of research teams that will continue working in these program areas until we see that the strategy is working and it's really providing a lot of benefit. By the way, these strategies that we're working in, the direction we're taking is exactly in line with what we hear from our member companies. These are the strategies and directions that our member companies are also taking. So your participation that Steve's talking about in these things ensures that you and your company aren't gonna be left behind. And I think that's really critical as we go through uh, an important uh, transition. Um, in addition to the excellence in research, I want to point out the work of our outstanding staff at CII. They really do a great job. There's uh, 23 people on our staff at CII. We also have graduate students, and there's about eight or nine others at uh, PIP, our sister organization. Uh, and despite a number of changes, we, our staff is absolutely committed to your success. We have a great team, and sort of as validation of my, uh, my point here is uh, Pam Wooten, who you see, her picture is on the screen here. Um, the Cockrell School of Engineering at the University of Texas gave her a very prestigious award earlier this year, uh, the Cockrell School of Engineering Staff Excellence Award. Uh, so she's not here this week because somebody's got to run CII while the rest of our staff's out here. Um, and she's back in Austin making sure that that happens. Uh, but we should congratulate her anyway. Uh, so, as I close out my comments this morning, I want to talk a little bit about the future where we're going, and it, I'm really convinced that CI's got to collaborate uh, with others. We can't improve the industry all by ourselves, even with the 145 companies we have. Um, in addition to the leading edge research that we're known for, uh, this, our, our power in the industry is amplified when we can collaborate with other groups. Uh, Top amongst those groups is uh, PIP, Process Industry Practice. And so over the last couple decades, PIP has done a great job at, we say, harmonizing engineering standards to promote efficiency during uh, the engineering process. Um, we're looking to partner with them in one of those strategic areas, uh, that being digital structured project delivery. Uh, PIP's already done some good work in embedding some of their engineering standards into some of the 3D BIM software systems. Uh, they've got a booth here also in the Innovation Showcase, so uh, you should check that out as well. Um, but we're going to do even more with PIP. A lot of you are also members of, of PIP. Um, domestically, we collaborate with a number of groups uh, to improve safety and capital efficiency. The groups that you see on the screen are people who have co-funded or directly funded research at CII. Um, we're, we reciprocate on, on funding research and on working on other initiatives. I'm particularly proud of the collaboration we have with Kurt on our communications and our voice magazine. So for the last 15 months, uh, we've worked directly with them to put CII articles and research into the voice magazine. Hopefully you're reading that. You all can get it uh, electronically and, and maybe in hard copy. Uh, but we also support the missions of other groups as well, like uh, ECC, AGC, and others. And I, I think working together, we can really improve this industry substantially. Uh, the other thing is CII is global. Even if you're a company that operates primarily in the lower 48, you're still sourcing products and services from around the world. Uh, we currently have nine established partners uh, around the world. Uh, many of them are here with us uh, today for the, for the conference this week. Um, and three are joining, uh, we have a new global affiliates program. Uh, but we're, we may grow that substantially more with another eight affiliates through our growing partnership with Constructing Excellence out of the UK. And if all this were to happen, we would have a total uh, network of about 20 global affiliates. The map that you see, the, the blue countries indicate where our CI members are headquartered. And of course, our members are doing projects literally probably in every country in the entire world. And so it's important for our members, they tell us that, you tell us, um, hey, our employees in other countries, the contractors we hire in other continents, it's important for them to understand the CI research and knowledge as well. And we can't fund offices in every continent, so we, the way that we do this is we leverage the relationships we have uh, with our global affiliates. So this is of great importance to, to me, to CII, and hopefully to you going forward. Um, and uh, encourage you, these are things to look forward to and in, in increase collaboration and, and global footprint as we move forward. So, um, and then I'm gonna hand it back to Steve. He's gonna talk about peer connections and the value of the networking. Great. 
Uh, <clears throat> so just kind of building off of what Noe um, uh, led us off with is you know, getting to know each other, right? Um, part of, uh, a big part of CII, obviously, is the, is the research and, and you know, some of the information related to how do we improve our projects. But another big aspect of, of CII is, is the networking part, right? Is, is meeting your, your partners. It's meeting the people that are, you're gonna actually work with in the trenches delivering you know, these assets. Um, and part of that, the way we do that, uh, is this conference. And uh, so Noe mentioned that within the conference right now, we've got uh, the app, and the app has some features in it where we can actually connect with one another. Uh, it's a little challenging for folks like myself to, to kind of stretch out and, and, and use that to, to be a communication device. Um, but, but we need to, you know, when we're thinking about technology and, and uh, how we're gonna communicate, not only today, but in the future and so on, these are some of the mechanisms to do that. So, you know, utilize the app um, accordingly and, um, uh, and, and reach out to folks, right? Participate in, uh, you know, the, the various sessions that we've got going on. Uh, I think last night and tonight will be an equal opportunity for us all to, to get to know each other even more. Uh, reach out to the to the either the new members or the prospective members. Um, you know the um, part of the the value proposition for CII is to gain more potential partners and and people that can can you know, help us in executing our assets as we as we move forward. So the new uh, or the prospective members are an equally important part of uh, of the effort. Um, Noe also mentioned the, um, some of the next-gen uh, leaders. So it, there's a, a small group of uh, you know, up-and-coming uh, leaders within your industry or your, your companies. And they've met and created um, you know, various mechanisms on uh, you know, how, we, how we collaborate, how we um, uh, get closer together. So they've had actually uh, meetings in, in different parts of uh, the U.S. I know one was in Houston, one up in the D.C. area, I think, uh, and there's others planned. But participate, whether it's you yourself or others within your organization. Um, this is a way to kind of um, spread the word of CII, meet some new folks within, uh, within the industry, but also to um, uh, you know, leverage new data and information into CII if we can get some other folks to, to join, the, uh, join the effort. Um, so we do have a, uh, a short video from one of the next gen uh, leaders, and what we'll uh, maybe get, get that queued up and run that, and then we'll have a short discussion after that. Hi, I'm Jody Kim. I'm a manager at Deloitte in our infrastructure and capital projects practice. We have really enjoyed CII. The conference is a great time to hear from inspiring speakers and learn about some of the new developments in the industry, specifically with technology lately. Um, we also really value the relationships. I think that's really the biggest benefit that CII has for its members, the open forum to connect, to learn from each other, and brainstorm ways to move forward better. I think conference is really best for disruptors in your company. That could be at the senior level or even more junior. It's really people who want to make improvements and continue to drive our industry forward. So the... Uh... The Strategic Planning Committee of, of CII met, met yesterday, and the, uh, the Next Gen leaders had an opportunity to, to sit down with us and, and kind of talk about you know, participating in CII. And just a couple of things resonated with me, that um, you know, it's per the perception of participating in a research team is that you need to have years and years of experience. And uh, you know, I think that um, we, need, we need that, Right? We need to know where we've come from, what we're doing today, but we also need the participation of the next generation. Right? Is how do we participate or how do we collaborate uh, in projects as we, um, as we move forward? So again, another call to action, you can see my role up here is to get you all engaged, right? Um, is to, to identify some of your future leaders and put them onto uh, these research teams. Right? It's, a, it's a great way for them to learn, to bring back information into your organization, but also the other way, right, is to get 
kind of how we're going to work together in the future built into the, uh, the research efforts and, um, uh, you know, where we're headed and kind of moving forward here. Okay. Um, one other thing, uh, so as the, as the chair of, uh, of CII, I get to kind of oversee the uh, executive committee. And the executive committee, as you see up on, on the screen, is made up of, a, I think, a very strong um, cross-section of the industry, you know, our, our industry. So you've got owners, contractors, suppliers. Um, and I'd, you know, we, we couldn't be here today and so on without the leadership of, of that group, uh, supported by all the other committees within, uh, within CII. All right, uh, just a uh, kind of a call out for the person standing up here next year is going to be Joe Dorsch. Uh, he's the vice chair this year. Uh, he'll be the chair next year. So uh, treat him well as he uh, progresses into that. That'll happen at the end of uh, end of the calendar year. All right. So in, uh, enjoy the conference. Uh, engage with uh, with your fellow cohorts. And I'm going to hand it back to to Noe here. And we'll see you a little bit later on in the in the conference. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Stephen.